G'day, it's it's Monday. Uh, this week the goal is get the bathroom finished off, lined, uh, shower mixer, shower rail, all that stuff put in. Tanks mounted, uh, pumps, accumulators, all uh, under for plumbing done. As much plumbing done as I possibly can, uh, ready for beginning cabinetry next week. Uh, so that's that's the plan for the week. First up though is uh, drop the fresh tank back out so that uh, the ply can get primed and I can paint the, the frame. Maybe this illustrates a bit more clearly how the fresh tank mount works. So you've got the frame coming up to these cross members. It's the stud that I've welded in or the bolt I've welded into this piece to pick up the cross member which runs across, sits on top of the chassis, bolted to through the chassis, running right across and the front end is done the same way. Okay, that's the bathroom lining installed. Uh, I've got a little bit of cleanup to do where I've got a little bit of glue squirt out where it slots into the groove of that tongue and groove board there. Um, the way that I've done it and the way that I've designed it is that there's minimal clamping re required just down the sides of the door. Uh, it's because these pieces and this big wall are pushing, capturing the, the end walls in place. So um, that doesn't require clamping. I've pushed it all in and it's squished into the glue nicely. Um, and then just clamps down the sides of the doorway. So we'll let that glue go off and then uh, we can finish off those little pieces of lining that need doing. G'day, it's, uh, it's Tuesday, it's uh, Melbourne Cup Day, so public holiday here in Victoria. Um, so off to a little bit of a later start today, not because I get a public holiday, but because uh, I don't want to make too much noise too early in the day when uh, the neighbours are potentially having a sleep in. Um, but all good things must come to an end. So uh, I'm going to get to work now and try to concentrate on doing less noisy things earlier in the day if I can. So I'm going to do some plumbing stuff now because um, that's kind of on the quieter end of things.
These are going to be trimmed around with an aluminium trim uh, after the glue's gone off. Well, now that we've uh, put all the lining in the shower, let's do something a little bit more fun. using this as a seal to stop water from being able to get through the lining and to the framework. Not using it as a glue so much. And probably a good idea to remember to put the doofa for the wand on. So I just got done installing this uh, fan light in the bathroom and then realized I forgot to hit record so you just have to imagine me installing it. All right well that's uh, kind of the fun stuff over. It's time to go back to uh, tank install. The fresh tank is in and the shower tank is in so time to get the grey tank um, installed sorted out. This is probably the one that I'm being the least clear about how I'm going to install it from the get-go. Uh, but basically it's going up here inside the chassis rail near the diesel tank. And now I have to figure out exactly how I'm going to make that happen. Feel my legs burning in the sun. We don't want to spend too much time lying here with my legs in the sun. Ah, oh, just caught my funny bone. Oh. I wonder why we call it a funny bone. It's not very funny, really. I have a plan beginning to formulate in my mind. I think I have enough of a plan now that I can drop the tank and get started on that. Okay, the grey tank is basically ready to install now. But before I can do that, I need to figure this lot out. So. These things are going to mount on the other side of the chassis from where the grey tank is going and I'm going to need to mount them before I can actually put the grey tank in permanently. Uh, so this is the diesel hydronic heater which is going to provide hot, hot fluid to heat the, our water. Uh, we've got the accumulator for the kitchen system, water pump for the kitchen system 
got the header tank for the hydronic heating and the heat exchangers, one for the kitchen hot water, one for the shower hot water um, and sundry bits and pieces to connect it all up and make it work. Uh, so I need to figure out how and where exactly all of this stuff is going to mount. Looks like the best place for the hydronic heater is going to be just up here behind the diesel tank. We've just bent the bracket to, to fold around under the chassis. I can bolt through under the bottom of the chassis and I'll just make some new holes here to bolt through at the top end of the chassis. Okay, well, it's Thursday morning. Uh, I feel like I didn't really get very much done yesterday. There's been a, a bunch of stuff going on this week, um, and I had a couple of snags with the, the plumbing, um, some supply issues and stuff, and so uh, I haven't gotten as far as I would have liked with it, uh, but you know, that's kind of how it goes. So I'm I'm waiting on some mounts for the heat exchangers, which are coming from uh, Diesel Heat. I uh, had some contact with them yesterday because they inadvertently sent me the wrong host tails, so they're sending me the correct ones and a satchel to send the incorrect ones back. Uh, and they're also sending me the mounts for these heat exchangers, which are from a defunct project of theirs. Uh, so it's really generous of them. Um, so then I thought, well, I'll jump on to doing the the shower plumbing system and I came to the spin down filter and the mount that come, came with it uh, was pretty hopeless, wasn't going to be any good under the van um, and so I designed and 3D printed this mount so this is uh, ready to go now, that's a nice flexible filament um, and so that'll mount up on the chassis rail um, but then uh, I got these water filters uh, to be the kind of the middle stage filtration for the for the shower system uh, but the fittings on them are no good so I'm going to have to take that back uh, or come up with a solution of how I can get PEX to connect to that because it's not straightforward and easy um, so I kind of can't go any further with that system at the moment either so I think what I'm going to work on this morning is um, trimming out these parts in the bathroom and um, give the floor a clean, do the do the ceiling in the corners, um, try and get the bathroom as, as finished as I can. I'm going to give it another coat of uh, flex seal on the floor, but I want to do as much of the other stuff as I possibly can before I do that. Rather than doing mitered corners, I've decided to do squared off corners like this. So for this corner I am mitering it because I've got a three-way join here, so it's pretty close. I can get what I need out of that, I need to just Sneak just a tiny bit more length off this one and then I'll cut a piece to go up here and just butt into the bottom there. Time's gone by, I was practiced enough at this to do it without asking, but 
good on a regular enough basis anymore to be that good, so asking it is. Right, so I, I can't uh, get all of this finished because I'm waiting on some fittings and things. Um, but this is basically how the shower filtration will work. So coming out of the shower tank, you come through a spin down filter, then through the pre-filter for the pump. So by the time it gets to the pump, there shouldn't be any big particulates left in the water. Uh, then through the pump, accumulator, uh, through kind of big filtration, and then finally through the Thirsty Nomad. Um, the Thirsty Nomad filter is, um, it helps to kill kills 99.9999% of bacteria and viruses, including Giardia cysts and Cryptosporidium. Uh, so um, this is about sanitation of the water. Uh, but I'm putting this last. I want the water to already be pretty, pretty clean before it gets here. These are not super cheap, so I, I don't want to be um, using up the the Thirsty Nomad faster than I need to. So these guys will handle the bulk of the filtration post water pump. And this is about making the water safe. Let's, uh, let's get started. We'll start with mounting the, the spin down filter nice and close to the tank. So we can come out of the tank into the spin down filter and then work our way across from there. There is a right way and a wrong way direction to run thread tape. And the way I remember it is that I just have it this way around. So with the fitting in my left hand and the thread pointing towards my right and I come over the top away from myself with the thread tape. Uh, and that's just about when you thread the fitting on, it, um, it's winding the tape tighter, not loosening it. So I'm just looking to position the pump in a place where the fittings are going to line up reasonably nicely with the spin down filter. It's part of the reason for mounting the pumps on the chassis rather than screwing them up to the floor like you sometimes see people do uh, is the chassis being just that little bit more removed from the body of the vehicle if you like uh, or from the floor, hopefully there'll be less vibration and, and um, noise transferred through to the interior of the vehicle. Put a thread lock on the back side of here. Ideally the accumulator would be the other way up, um, but it would make it very difficult to charge. So. It is going up this way. I'm thread locking everything because vibrations on the road. Just 
an extra level of protection from things coming undone and causing problems. There's a guy over the road who never seems to go to work. I wonder if he thinks the same thing about me. Good day, everyone. Uh, it's Saturday morning. Um, coming to the end of what's been quite a busy week, but busy with a lot of things other than van building, uh, as well as obviously van building. That and supply issues uh, have meant that I am I'm not where I needed to be or wanted to be by the end of this week. Um, wanted to have bathroom finished and the plumbing all done and uh, I'm not going to have the plumbing all done. So anyway, um, let's get into it and see how much we can get finished by the end of today. Water filters are designed to be uh, used with cold water and uh, cold water is defined as below 40 degrees so uh, it should be fine. For, uh, for what I'm doing, um, even though for the shower I'm heating and reheating the water, this is before going through the heat exchanger, so coming out of the tank, through the filters, uh, the water should be less than 40 degrees. Alright, let's go put this in and I'll uh, show you where things are at under there. Windy today. Okay, so let's check our water flow direction. Let's go go that way. It's going to sit about there. Just conk my head. So, uh, we're coming out of the tank, through the spin down filter, through the pump, accumulator, through our Stefani filters right up the end here, and back over the top of the chassis into our Thirsty Nomad filter, and then out of the Thirsty Nomad filter through this T. So off this side of the T will go straight to the cold inlet on the mixer, in the shower mixer, and this side of the T will go across to the heat exchanger, heat up the water, and then back to the hot side of the mixer. Okay, so the next part of the puzzle is to get my plumbing from the mixer down through the floor and to join up to what I've already got in under underneath. Uh, so the first thing I need to do is work out where I'm going to bring it down through the floor because I need to miss the chassis rail which runs through here somewhere. So I'm just going to take some measurements to double check on its location and these pipes are going to have to come out over here somewhere. Just cut a couple of pieces of trim and 
Just giving this a good clean before I stick the door on. Okay, so the uh, bathroom door is now installed. I'm just gonna leave these clamps on here for now while the glue is going off, just to make sure nothing shifts, but it really shouldn't. I do still need to do something up here with uh, trimming this out. I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to do there yet. It'll be another aluminium extrusion most likely, um, but how it all works up in this corner will depend on what I do here. And I think that's going to depend to some extent on uh, the wardrobe. So the wardrobe is next week. Um, it's part of what's planned for, for next week's work. So I'm going to leave those trim pieces for now until uh, I've got more clarity on what I'm doing there. Um, I can't really do much in terms of the freshwater plumbing for the kitchen um, for obvious reasons. So uh, I do need to do the water filler. Well, this week was meant to be plumbing week and I've now done as much of the plumbing as I'm able with the parts that I have and things I have in place inside the van. So I think the next thing I need to do though is have a bit of a clean up. Uh, I've got a pretty big mess on the bench behind me. So I'm gonna clean that up and then I'm gonna take a look at um, the bed. Okay, that's a whole lot better. Um, so you can see on the bench behind me is the basis of the bed. It should be uh, a pretty simple arrangement. It's uh, these bed beams from IKEA with their brackets that go at the ends to support them. And then slats from IKEA as well. By the time I looked at different ways of making the bed and um, the amount of work involved and the cost and everything. It seemed a no-brainer really to go for these. They'll be quick, they'll be easy and they won't be any more expensive than doing it um, from scratch. Well there we have the basis for the bed. I'm going to add more fixings. Um, I don't know that I want to trust those screws like that, but it's kind of the beginning. Well that's it for this episode. Thanks so much for joining me. Um, this week has been a bit of a challenge, uh, but we've gotten a good amount done. Really pleased to have the bathroom complete and uh, be started on the bed and uh, the, the sheets are arriving on Monday for the kitchen and the wardrobe. 
So I'll be getting started on, on the wardrobe on Monday, uh, hopefully, and then I'll, into the kitchen later in the week. So looking forward to that. There'll be some plumbing parts arrive as well. So there'll probably be some plumbing in the mix. Uh, although I may not get too much back into that until the kitchen carcass is uh, is built and I've got something to plumb. So uh, we'll see how, how the week pans out, but looking forward to next week. Um, new things again, new challenges, and um, we're just edging closer and closer to a completed van. So uh, join me next time. Thanks. Thanks for watching. See ya.